Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at another paper from the very recent International Conference on Software Engineering. And this paper takes a look at what sorts of bugs we have in self-driving car software or autonomous vehicle software. The authors are from the University of California at Irvine, which is my own alma mater, and Nanjing University in China. There have been a lot of studies on what kinds of bugs happen in software, what their root causes are, and so on. And they have focused on a number of specific domains, like numerical software or machine learning and so on. The authors claim that this is the first in-depth study of bugs and their root causes that focuses specifically on the domain of autonomous vehicles. They look at two specific open source AV systems. One is from Baidu, it's called Apollo, and the other one is Autoware. And these are the two open source leading software packages for self-driving cars and apparently have already seen a lot of usage both from companies as well as governments. And since these are open source, it gives the authors a good data set to look at the source code of these two code bases and classify and examine the bugs found in them. The sad truth is that whenever you have software, you're going to have bugs. But when you have bugs in self-driving cars, people could end up getting hurt. Uh, for example, there was an accident recently where a self-driving Uber ended up killing a pedestrian. I actually did a video looking in depth at the NTSB report from that accident. I will link that in the description below. The hope is that we can look at the bugs we have found so far and learn from them and build more robust and safer systems. When we talk about autonomous vehicles, we talk about six levels of autonomy, going from zero to five. I like that they started at zero. Level zero is no autonomy at all. The human driver is in full control all the time. And level five is the highest level of autonomy, where the car drives completely in any driving environment by itself. Level four, which is one below that, is full autonomy with no human drivers required, but only under certain conditions. And those are conditions that make the autonomy problem slightly easier by restricting it to, for example, just highway driving or only fixed routes and so on. The authors looked at these two code bases for Apollo and Autoware, and they found about 500 bugs from about 17,000 commits across those two code bases. The way they found bugs was to look at a list of keywords, things like fix or defect or error or bug in the commit messages. And if they found those words, those commits were classified as bug fixes. And once you have all the commits that are bug fixes, you want to then classify them so that you can look at their root cause and their symptoms. And this was done manually by two of the authors of this paper. You could have several root causes ranging from incorrectly implementing an algorithm to incorrectly computing numbers, missing condition checks, incorrectly assigning to variables and so on, incorrect condition logic, or even incorrect configuration. And this is going to be important later on. Configuration consists of things like build files or various fine-tuned parameter values or how to install things or, for example, Docker configuration files. So what did the authors find the root causes of these 500 bugs to be? This is a table that summarizes it. And if you look at the two leading causes, you will see that they are incorrectly implementing an algorithm or incorrect configuration. And each of them by itself accounts for nearly 30% of all bugs. So together, that's almost 60% of all bugs are either incorrect algorithms or bad configuration. How do these bugs then manifest as symptoms in the operation of the vehicle? 
Here they have a table that classifies that and you'll see that crashes, these are talking about crashes of software, not crashes of cars, are a leading symptom. Build errors are another leading symptom, especially since bad configuration was a leading root cause. But then you also see a lot of these bugs causing issues with the actual driving. Things like speed and velocity control or lane positioning and navigation. Many of the bugs also manifest as GUI issues. And then they also have logic errors. I'm not entirely sure why they didn't classify this as a root cause and why it's showing up as a symptom. But overall, the authors found that about 30% of bugs directly affect driving functionality. So that sounds pretty serious, but if you narrow that down to bugs with explicit safety or security implications, those thankfully are quite infrequent, constituting only about 1% of the bugs they looked at. But even though these safety critical bugs occur very infrequently, only about 1% of the time, that doesn't mean the picture is all rosy because 1% multiplied by a large number of vehicles and a large number of people in those vehicles can still result in a sizable number of safety incidents. As we saw, one of the leading causes of bugs was bad configurations. And what this tells us is that these are large, complex systems and even just properly configuring and building and compiling them is not a straightforward task. I was somewhat surprised to see that given that a lot of these systems are written in C and C++, only a very small number of bugs were caused by memory safety issues. Now this might just be because the programmers are very diligent with memory and type safety, or it might be because these code bases have not come under much adversarial attack yet. The authors do acknowledge some threats to validity of their findings in this paper. And in my opinion, the biggest threat to validity is the question of how generalizable these findings are. They looked at two open source autonomous vehicle systems, but there are also a number of highly proprietary self-driving cars, for example, Teslas or Waymos. And those code bases are not open source and cannot be studied. However, these two systems are targeting L4 autonomy and are being tested and used as such. And this gives us some confidence that at least the broad shape of these findings might be applicable to these commercial closed source AV systems as well. There isn't any data about it in this paper, but I'd be curious to see how many miles have been driven under these systems as opposed to proprietary systems like Tesla's or Waymo's. So that was a quick look at a paper that does a study of the kinds of bugs and the root causes of those bugs found in two large open source autonomous vehicle systems. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.